Gallardo and today I'm interviewing Dr. David Dighton, a London and Nicosia based cardiologist. Welcome David. Thank you for inviting me. Welcome. Today I would like to ask you about blackouts. People get faint, dizzy and even blackouts at times. Are there many different types? Not many, no, but we can classify them as arising from the brain and nervous system, like the epilepsy, and then from the heart and circulation, like fainting, although there are many other types of heart troubles that give rise to, to blackouts. Uh, what is the commonest type? Well, I think the commonest type is probably vertigo, by which we mean that the head is spinning and you lose your balance. It's a bit like being seasick, if you don't like the sea. The boat goes up and down, or you feel that you're twisting, and this makes you feel sick, nausea, and can make you then feel faint. But the idea of your head spinning can sometimes make people feel very ill. Now, is it serious? Very, very rarely. Um, it's supposed to be sometimes due to um, a tumour of the nerve in, in to, to, to the ears and balance mechanisms. But in my whole life I've never seen one, but they do occur. Mostly it's probably due to an increased fluid in the balance mechanisms. These are the, called the semicircular canals, which are embedded in the bone. And that is, we're not really sure what causes it. Some people think it's a virus. It can be uh, a lack of blood getting through the neck into these that make you dizzy when you look up at tall buildings. But I, the short answer is no, they're not very serious, but they, but they are an awful feeling. So people regard them as serious. And uh, how is it treated? Well, the simple form of um, uh, the simple form of vertigo can be treated with tablets. Um, there is one uh, called hyacine, which is, I think has been used by astronauts because in, in the space station, for instance, they are twisting around all the time, which is very nauseating. So they use hyacine, but there are many others. Another one you can buy over the counter in, in most um, uh, pharmacies uh, called Stugeron or Sinarazine, which just helps calm it down. It soon passes anyway. It doesn't last more than a few hours usually. Fainting is a terrible feeling. What causes it? It's a bit complicated because it's a reflex inside the nervous system and in the heart and circulation system that causes two main things. One is a lack of blood going to the brain, so you feel as if you're going to pass out. And the other is a very slow pulse. Uh, from uh, another point of view, it's a person who goes very white, maybe even a slightly green colour, and they have to lie down because they feel nausea and sickness, and they just can't s stay up. In severe fainting, of course, they just pass out. How would I know if my friend w was about to faint? Well, you can usually see that they are becoming more pale. They go from pink to white, they will be sweating a lot, usually and they become as if they're not listening to you and from the patient's point of view their their vision starts to fade they can't see properly their hearing becomes less and then in the end they may just fall over but within about five minutes there's usually quite a big warning maybe even five minutes or ten minutes where they realize that they are feeling worse and worse now that warning is very important because that is something that is missing from other types of blackouts, like heart blackouts, where the heart stops, or epilepsy. They, they don't have much warning, so you wouldn't be able to detect them, but you can detect fainting coming. And what should I do to help? Well, a lot of people like to put their friend's head between their knees. I'm not really sure why they do this, because it's a very bad thing. It stops the blood reaching the brain, which is the problem. The, the only way to really deal with it is to lie them down. Even better than just lying on the floor, and of course it may be very inconvenient, but at least lying down, the blood gets back to the brain. And if you can make them move their legs, that pumps the blood into the head. Those are perhaps the two most important things. Of course, a lot of people will want a, a cold feeling on their head and so on, and a sip of water. Uh, they're not very important. The most important thing is to lie them down and put their feet up and make them move their feet. That will get them as good as you're going to get. Is fainting serious? 
No, it's a quite an innocent thing. It happens to. Yeah. If you are sure it is true fainting, then it definitely is not serious. Although it can occur in serious situations and also in some other innocent situations. For instance, if somebody is getting a virus infection, suppose they are about to get uh, gastroenteritis, suppose they are pregnant but don't know it, suppose they're just about to get pneumonia or something like that, they're ill, just before they're really ill, they may get faint very easily. So it usually means something. I have it also seen people who faint when they're very stressed, which is a bit strange, but I've seen a few cases where our final conclusion was that they were just stressed and the reflexes inside their body were heightened and, uh, and made them uh, faint more easily. So stress can do it, but that's a bit difficult to discern when you're in the street or in a restaurant. So what are the more serious uh, types of blackouts? Well, I think I would say that epilepsy, of course, was a very serious form. Usually epileptics are known to doctors and their families, so uh, sometimes they fail to take their medication and they, and they may have a sudden blackout with movement of their arms. Um, epilepsy is a difficult one. They can bite their tongue. It's quite difficult to know how to deal with them. It needs an expert, usually. Um, the other forms which are serious are those where the heart stops suddenly or goes very slow or goes very fast. There is a condition called heart block in older people, they need pacemakers, and in younger people sometimes and in those with known heart disease, their rhythm goes from a steady, regular rhythm to very fast indeed, like this, it's literally hundreds of beats per minute that can't sustain blood to the brain and so they pass out. And the diagnosis of these can be quite difficult. I understand that older people can have a special form of blackouts? Yes, they do. They have, uh, to me, very interesting because I actually worked with the man who invented pacemakers, a chap called Jeff Davis, when I was working in London at St George's Hospital. He actually made the first pacemaker. And our patients were older people, usually over 65, over 70, whose heart would suddenly go very slow. This is because the ele electrical pulses failed to go from the top to the bottom. So we had to put a pacemaker in, which ticks and allows the heart to tick again. And, and with one of those in, they, they don't pass out. It's a very special form of blackout because it's sudden. They can be completely normal, then bang, they're, they're on the floor. And they go very pale, become unconscious, and then within a minute, they become pink again. So um, this was first described by two people called Adams and Stokes, so we call them Adam Stokes blackouts or Adam Stokes syncope. And the importance of it is that it's sudden, there's no warning, and they need a pacemaker. Those are the important things about that. What about blackouts in young people? Well, young people are mostly subject to fainting. I would say it's probably 98% of all blackouts or near blackouts because most fainting doesn't really cause people to be unconscious but nearly unconscious. About 98% of faints. A few are epilepsy and they already know they're epileptics but there is also a very important rare group where the heart is responsible. Heart muscle disease. You have heard of footballers dying while playing. Um, sometimes they can have some warning blackouts. That's because the heart rhythm instead of going slow I mentioned the slow heart rate in older people. In younger people it can go very, very fast and can't pump properly so there's not enough blood getting into the brain. This can be sometimes due to what we call ventricular tachycardia, very fast, or even a lethal form which is called ventricular fib fibrillation. And for this we now have implantable uh, devices which shock the heart back to normal. That's a fairly new thing, but it works really quite well. Can you detect that by testing young people? You can. I mean, it's, it's very rare, so it's very difficult to justify everybody having these tests. But yes, we can. We can do echo soundings of the heart, because the heart muscle can be abnormal, something called uh, myopathy, which underlies it. Um, so, and there are other tests like artery furring scans, but 
In young people up to the age of 30 or 35, we very rarely see them to test them. But if we have a warning of fainting, then we test for everything. And nowadays, I think football clubs with professional footballers will get all their footballers tested just in case they have an incident on, on the football pitch. It can sometimes be worthwhile in people like uh, public vehicle drivers, bus drivers, pilots. The company who employs them wants to know that they're not going to have a blackout while they're working, obviously. So it's that type of reason we do. But in general, we don't tend to test younger people for these things unless they have some symptoms. So coming back to fainting, as it's so common, mm -hmm. how, how do you treat it? It's quite difficult, apart from lying people down, as I mentioned. When people are having continuous fainting, they can take a tablet like hyacine, because that stops the reflexes inside the heart. But there's not really a very good way of treating it. Some people these days, I have to say, um, are not eating much salt. If you don't eat salt, your blood pressure drops, whether you have high blood pressure or low blood pressure. If you, if you stop too much stop salt in the diet, your blood pressure will drop and it makes you much slightly more liable to faint. Of course, we don't want to give people with high blood pressure extra salt, but in young people who are subject to low pressure, they have to be a bit careful to eat salt, especially when it's hot, especially on summer holidays or if you go to tropical places, because you lose a lot of salt in the sweat. And if this occurs, you'll be far more liable to faint. So just being aware of the amount of salt and water you drink could be all you need to do. But otherwise, you can have these tablets. Not many people have them, uh, like hyacinth, which can help for more difficult cases. If someone experiences blackouts, what should they do? Well, I think one, one faint is OK. Um, it's difficult to draw the line. But if somebody is fainting every week, then obviously they need to be tested, uh, and tested thoroughly as well, heart tracings, echo soundings, reflex tests, you can, we can do how, how well the heart speeds up and slows down. Especially in older people, we would like to attach a, an ECG monitor to make sure that they're not having very slow periods or very fast periods. So those are the sort of tests we would do, but we'd only really do those if somebody's had two or three repeated attacks. We don't usually do it with one, but it depends on the circumstances. All that remains is to thank you for watching and Dr. David Dighton coming to help us understand about the blackouts. It's a pleasure. If you would like to have more information about this subject, why not buy or download our HeartSense book, which is easy to read and contains useful information about the heart and the best diet to eat. In case you would like to read something more technical, you can buy our Eat Your Heart content book from our websites. And you can also download this very short brochure worried about your heart, which explains many details about heart problems and which is available in four languages – English, Greek, German and Russian. Don't forget to purchase our HeartSense supplement, which is essential to even the best diet. Soon we will also have HeartSense tablets, which will be available on our websites. All our products and information are available on our websites – heartsense.com.cy and the cardiac center uk.co.uk